TV dinner. In fact, I don't think Ready Meal should have the calories written on the back. I think they should have the TV listings. <laughs> just turn over and go, oh, that goes well with Downton Abbey. <laughs> I'll have two of them. Because <laughs> you always have two, don't you? <laughs> no, no, me neither. I love man versus food. If you went on a date with him, you'd never feel like the greedy one, would you? <laughs> Split the bill, though. I might be a feminist, but I'm not a bloody idiot. <laughs> I like Nigel Slate as cooking shows, but he's always making stuff with leftovers. Sorry, le leftovers. <laughs> what are they? <laughs> Surely that's the other half of your dinner. <laughs> I love watching The Cube. Are you kidding? Philip Schofield making me get inside a Perspex box and then I have to do whatever he tells me to while he watches. <laughs> it's like a dream I once had. <laughs> Undercover boss, but one thing that always bothers me is how they disguise the boss. They often just put glasses on them. <laughs> is that it? Is that all you've done? Sometimes they put a wig on them or a zip up cardigan. I'm waiting for the day Ronald McDonald turns up <laughs> with a baseball cap on over his big red clown wig, <laughs> declaring himself Jason, the new team member. <laughs> and then he's sprung as soon as someone honks his nose. <laughs> I do get annoyed at the end of those programmes, though. There was one set aboard a cruise liner and it focused on a young Filipino lad who worked 18-hour days for less than minimum wage. He hadn't seen his family for years, one of his kids had died. It was awful, poor bugger. When his boss brought him in, he clearly thought he'd done something wrong and the whole audience is shouting at home, give him a proper wage, give him a proper wage! <laughs> but instead his boss said, you work so hard, you've had such a horrible time. I'm going to send you to Disneyland for the weekend. <laughs> it was Paris as well, not even the good Disneyland. <laughs> Shows about jobs are very popular at the moment. BBC Three had Young Butcher of the Year. I thought of some others they could do. Young Cobbler of the Year. <laughs> Get through to boot camp. <laughs> Young Burglar of the Year. Congratulations, you're through to judges' houses. <laughs> Young porn actor of the year, well done. You're through to the live semis. <laughs> I did a work experience at a veterinary hospital when I was a teenager. I thought it'd just be cuddling rabbits, but it was much more horrific. <laughs> they said, would you like to sit in on an operation? I said yes, and as I walked in, I saw a bucket on the floor to collect the pus. <laughs> and I don't mean a cat. <laughs> <laughs> this is not what I signed up for. <laughs> I'm happy to report that I was pretty feisty even at 16. I worked as a Saturday kid at WH Smith's and whenever any blokes bought a porn magazine, I wouldn't offer them a bag. <laughs> to buy a Shields Gazette to hide their shame in. <laughs> the manager came down one day and said, since you started, the sales of the Gazette have shot up. <laughs> I also worked as an audiobook producer for a while, and one time a lady from the library came for a visit. She told me the local old people's home had borrowed some audiobooks and the staff had put one on in the day room with all the pensioners sitting round listening. But when a sex scene came on, the staff said, OK, that's enough for today. And apparently every single old lady came up and quietly asked if they could borrow the rest to listen to in bed. <laughs> you just imagine the clouds of dust coming out from under that door. <laughs> Mavis had the audio book last night to her room's gonna need a proper hoovering. <laughs> chance to do a recording for the audiobooks, I was wondering whether some of today's most popular books would work in my voice. Thank you. <laughs> I close my eyes tightly as he gently moves my panties. <laughs> panties? No women call them panties. <laughs> Knickers. <laughs> and slowly runs 
Jesus finger up and down my sex. <laughs> Is that what we call it now? My sex. No, and slowly runs his finger up and down me nunny. <laughs> Briefs, his erection springs free. <laughs> boy, 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 boy. <laughs> he reaches over to his bedside table and grabs a foil packet. It's a weird time for a Kit Kat. <laughs> When you're reading things like that, it saves you licking your finger to turn the page. <laughs> there is someone who knows all about my employment history. It's my dad, Philip. <laughs> Hello, Dad. Can you hear us all right? Certainly can, darling. Hello, Flower. Now, you've always had a very good work ethic, haven't you? Yes. Did you ever throw a sickie? Never. Not ever? Not once? Never threw a sickie. In fact, in them days, it wasn't called a sickie. It was called having one off for the Queen. <laughs> I don't know why that sounds rude to me. I don't know. Oh, that, that's having it off for the Queen, isn't it? <laughs> We're having it off for the Queen. <laughs> Can you remember what I wanted to be when I was a bane? Yes. What was that? You you wanted to be either a stripper... <laughs> ..or a pisky. <laughs> it took me ages to find out we were down in Cornwall one holiday and we found out that a pisky is a Cornish pixie. You don't mean pasty, do you? <laughs> I don't want to be a pasty. <laughs> <laughs> the stripper thing is weird. It's weird, isn't it? Well, you wanted, you liked dancing and you thought a stripper was just a nice lady dancing. It's definitely not a nice lady dancing, is it? I uh, don't know, I've never seen any. <laughs> you think I've still got a chance to be a stripper? More chance of being a stripper than a pisky. <laughs> now, because I think you know your job is the job that you did for life, and I, I always remember that I loved my first job in W. A. Smith. Absolutely loved it. What do you think I was like in those days? Because I was there from when I was sixteen to twenty-one. What do you think I was like then? Well, I don't know what you were like at W. A. Smith, but I have somebody here called Ian who may be able to help. Oh, shit. <laughs> Hello! Um, this is Ian, my old boss from WH Smith. <laughs> Hello! 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 I've got you a gazette, Philip. Oh. <laughs> um, oh, I'm glad, I'm glad. I saw, I saw a magazine fall out of it and I'm glad it's just a train one. That's good to know. What do you remember about me, Ian? Uh, always very cheerful, good with the customers. But oh. the main thing you were good at was making me a cup of coffee first thing on a Saturday morning before you started stuffing those 500 supplements into newspapers. Do you remember every Christmas Eve we used to do fancy dress? Do you remember that? Well, a couple of you did, yeah. Did it. And then there was one year where there was only me and my friend did it, and we decided to do bad taste. <laughs> so we had ladders and were tights and really bad makeup and stuff on, and nobody noticed. <laughs> Just thought we had our best clothes on. <laughs> I, I remember you leaving, do. Yes, um, I think uh, we were all stood around in a circle, and I was just about to go, and you were right opposite me, so. I went to give you a hug and I think I thought you thought I was trying to snog your face off. <laughs> I don't remember that at all. Chances are it was probably the first time somebody tried to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Dad and Ian. Ladies and gentlemen, my dad Philip, my old friend Ian. Thank you very much. I'm glad.
Dad, I was nice. Um, <laughs> my dad worked down the pit, and during the miners' strike in 1984, the local supermarkets rallied round, giving the miners' families their end-of-day stuff, pies, bread, cream cakes, that sort of thing. Marxies decided they wanted to help too and gave the miners 13 trays of avocados. <laughs> the miners had no idea what to do with them. Do we peel them? <laughs> They're quite hard. We could throw them at the coppers. <laughs> this one's soft. Terry, put it on the guacamole pile. <laughs> Duncan Bannatyne recently, and he was quite flirty. It's very flattering, but you couldn't have sex with them, could you? I'm out. I'm in. I'm out. I'm in. <laughs> I love watching The Apprentice. Lord Sugar always enters the boardroom in a really dramatic fashion a little bit later than everyone else. Just once, I want him to zip up and say, I'd give that five minutes if I were you. <laughs> it's not very representative of the real world. You can't just fire someone. One of these days, someone will turn up with a unison rep for the follow-up show. <laughs> the unfair dismissal. <laughs> Let's find out what really goes on on The Apprentice. Please welcome, for me, the most memorable contestant they've ever had, Stuart Bags. <laughs> Hello, you've done well. Look at this. Welcome, thank you very much. I've got a desk and everything, I know. In case anyone's forgotten how you got on on The Apprentice, let's watch a little bit of you in action. I consider myself an absolutely fantastic salesman. Everything I touch turns to sold. I'm passionate, I'm a grafter. There are always words used in this boardroom, and I'm all of those things, but I'm not a cliche. I am Stuart Bags the brand. I'm confident, I'm unique, and I'm successful. Why would you want to have a job with Lord Sugar? Because at the minute, I'm a big fish in a small pond. I'm You're not a big fish. You're not a big fish. You're not even a fish. <laughs> I'm not a one-trick pony. I'm not a ten-trick pony. I've got a field of ponies waiting to <laughs> literally <laughs> run towards this. Yeah. The thing is, you're full of shit, basically. <laughs> so, you are fired. Sugar said that you would look back at that moment and you would cringe. Have you cringed yet? Um, quite a few times. That's horrendous. No wonder I didn't lose my virginity until... I still haven't, to be fair. Oh. Oh, Anybody? That's... <laughs> Not the sort of show. Oh. Did you just pretend somebody whipped? <laughs> <laughs> oh, bless them. <laughs> um, with a name like Stuart Bag, shouldn't you be working on the checkout at Tesco? I'll take any job I can get. Look at me, I'm clearly the most unemployable person in the whole country. Oh, not at all. But you work for yourself. You've employed yourself. Is that, what, is that why? Because nobody else will take you on. You've just thought, I'll have to do it myself. Exactly. <laughs> there's, there's not a lot of options for me, are there? Genuinely. I mean, looking at it, when I went on the show, I was told by candidates before that, you know, you'll get quite a few job offers and just take what you... I got none. Not one job offer. I got an offer... Oh. It's not a pantomime. I'm still a... a not <laughs> But I got nothing apart from an offer for a Channel 5 dating show. And then they wouldn't have me. They said I was too ugly. Sorry, not their target demographic. Not their target I. demographic. a minger. <laughs> I look around getting sort of sympathy for once in my life. Oh, nice. well, we're a nice show, that's why. No, I'm not You're used not to as it. much of a bellend as I thought you'd be. <laughs> <laughs> um, you certainly know how to sell yourself. Um, here's you think? Your yeah, no, I think you do, cos here's your latest advert. I've got no offers. Oh. <laughs> That was for um, every man male cancer charity. I thought I would get naked um, to. Did they ask you or? <laughs> Did you just go into the office and start stripping off? <laughs> Did nobody tell you to move your hands slightly further down? Because I can stay yes, Stuart Bag. You can see uh, the mini brand. The mini brand? <laughs> Is that what you call it? Never call it mini love. <laughs> Let's talk about where it all started for you. You began by selling yo-yos in the playground, is that right? Can I just clarify this? Because yes, when I go you. out, people often say to me, oh, you sell yo-yos in a school play. It makes me sound like some kind of predator. I was at school at the time I was selling yo-yos. <laughs> not hanging around in a Mac jacket saying, do you want to see my yo-yos? <laughs> I think I saw them on the picture there. <laughs> uh... <laughs> Lord Sugar said you were full of shit. 
Yes. Um, do you think that was a fair assessment of how you behaved on The, uh, the Apprentice or not? Do no. You think it, it felt harsh when, when he said it, especially there when we were all watching it. It felt harsh. Yeah, of course it was harsh. You know, if I wasn't so much of a cock, that could have hurt me. <laughs> Rob people up the wrong way. Have you ever considered working from home? <laughs> the thing is, I do genuinely work from home a couple of days. <laughs> no, a couple of days a week, and there is nothing better than picking up the phone knowing that you're naked um, oh. and somebody calling in. No, you know. I mean, do you tell the person that you're naked? Because I'd have to. I, it's not that type of phone service that I'm offering. Um, <laughs> I don't know what you got to do. That's how I make my money. Um, <laughs> I'd have to go. I mean, I'll have a chat now, but I've got no knickers on, just so you know. I'd have to do that. You don't do that. No, I don't, no. I don't tell them. There's no disclaimer as such. And when you're on the phone, can you make a proper business decision when you've got your wanger out? <laughs> Sarah Peter. You think it helps? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, you're touching it at the same time, aren't you? Look at that now. Hand up. I need to make a decision. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming on the show. Ladies and gentlemen, Stuart Baggs. Thank you very much, yeah. Now, I love watching Coach Trip. Of course, there's nothing like a real Coach Trip, as none of them are on the run. <laughs> I saw the Chuckle Brothers on Coach Trip once, and I thought, ooh, it must be a celebrity version. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen Border Patrol? It's set in New Zealand and apparently one of the things they look out for is tiger penis. Must be easy to find on people. I only really know one good place to hide a penis. <laughs> travel shows are all very well, but they don't tell you everything you need to know. I've made a list of things travel shows don't tell you, but they should. Paris is actually shit. <laughs> to Brussels on purpose. <laughs> she doesn't like you, she's a prostitute. <laughs> Don't feed it or it'll follow you home. <laughs> this also applies to animals. <laughs> I've never worn fake tan, but a friend of mine who does says she wears it so that people think she's been on holiday. But when I'm abroad, I don't tan. I go pink, then red, then blister. <laughs> so if I want people to think I've been on holiday, I put too much blusher on me nose and iron me tits. <laughs> I remember when I went on holiday with the girls, one of them said, don't forget to get your bits done. I got it wrong. They'd all been waxed. I'd had mine blow-dried. <laughs> I'd let it grow in. I had a proper quiff and everything. <laughs> In Cosmopolitan magazine, there was a list of things for girls to remember to pack for holiday. Under, in the bedroom, it said, adapters. <laughs> Just how different are Spanish cocks? <laughs> it won't go in the hall. <laughs> well, I tried forcing it, but I could smell burning. <laughs> the internet is full of handy travel tips, although some of them are more useful than others. In France, it's now compulsory to carry an unused breathalyzer kit in your car. Don't worry if you haven't got one, though. Just drive erratically and the police will give you a free one. <laughs> if a sink plug is missing, simply cut a tennis ball in half. Great. Not only is me sink shit, but now I can't play a swing ball. <laughs> Pack only dark-coloured clothing to cut down on washing while away. It's also good if you can track down yellow and brown pants. <laughs> To ensure your caravan is level, place a cylindrical packet of biscuits on the floor. These will roll if the caravan is not level. I love that they've specified a cylindrical packet of biscuits. <laughs> that people are just putting bourbons down the going, <laughs> champion. <laughs> I've been watching that BBC Two show, Coast. If you haven't seen it, a bloke walks around the coast. <laughs> For the new series, they went to Holland. Before that, they must have been dying for some global warming. <laughs> A new course tonight? We're in Birmingham! <laughs> I'd like to find out more about that show, so please welcome the host of Coast, Neil Oliver. Hello. Hello, Neil. Thank you very much for coming on the 
the show, let's have a little look at you in action. It's not great conditions for studying rocks, but it is good for my passion. This is, after all, the sort of weather lighthouses were made for. And I enjoy a good lighthouse, me. <laughs> so I couldn't resist a visit to this one, on the needles, especially when I found out they're about to clean the lens. How often does the lens get cleaned then? Just once a year. It's going to take about that long. I'd hate to be responsible for a smear. <laughs> I wouldn't mind you being responsible for a smear, but anyway... Um... <laughs> now, Neil, you're not just a presenter of a great TV show, you're an archaeologist, you're a historian, you're an expert on the Vikings. Yes. What I really want to know is, how do you keep your hair look so manageable? <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, it's constant variety, I think. I just... I'm, I'm in hotels all the time mm -hmm. and I just use whatever's in the little bottles. No! Some the of taps. it's like fairy liquid. I like, <laughs> I like to think it's actually all the same stuff, whether it's expensive or in hotels. I like to think it's all just the same chemical, slightly different colours and textures. And do you condition? Uh, no, never. <gasps> Look no. at your lovely lips, I just, though! I just wash and go. You just... <laughs> Out in the wind and the rain a lot. Is frizz your mortal enemy? It, no, it, never, it never, it never frizzes. It never does anything. I am available for advertising campaigns. <laughs> I'm very easily kept. You're very easily kept. Here, why? Oh, okay. It sounded like we could have you as a pet or something. <laughs> Do you get a sore neck from turning to the camera all the time? That was a. A kind of a, an invention of the the directors and I think the the people who were. Sort of, putting the, the show together the first time we were filming it, they felt that it would look as if there was a reason to go on a journey if the presenter was always leaving the camera behind and heading off. So there was always a great deal of looking right. over the shoulder and come with me oh, and right. off so we like go. Oh, like we're following you? Yeah. Oh, that's nice. I like so that. it necessitated a lot of walking away from the camera towards cliff edges. <laughs> Yeah, do the cameramen get really annoyed because they've got to get really close to you and they're constantly following you? Well, it's actually better from the point of view of the cameraman because cameraman would traditionally be in, f in front yeah. walking backwards. But when you do it that way, they at least are walking forwards looking in the direction that they are going. So they and like that it. when you go over the cliff, they won't. <laughs> they will but they'll get it all on for the telly. They will know <laughs> precisely when to stop. <laughs> <laughs> now, you live in Stirling, an old historic part of Scotland. Yeah. Um, have you ever considered moving somewhere where they've got lots of nice new things? <laughs> no, that's the beauty of, of being with an archaeologist, because the older you get, the more interesting you become. Are you coming on to me? <laughs> You're a very beautiful woman. Oh, bless you. Oh, oh. <laughs> Yay! Oh, it's one of those compliments, isn't it? Yeah, oh, he likes old things. Um... <laughs> You've got a book. I've uh, got several books. The, the book that... I'm talking about is the amazing tales for making men out of boys. Oh, yeah. I've done that a couple of times. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that kind of book, sir. <laughs> but to be fair, I've also made uh, boys out of men. <laughs> <laughs> I want me, ma'am. Shut up. <laughs> In most of your programmes, you seem to be carrying a satchel. Uh-huh. What do you keep in your satchel? Well... I'm a very clean person. OK. Very uh, fastidious. And as my smalls are no longer available for wearing, I like to keep them separate from my big bag. So okay. I put, I put my, uh, my yesterday's pants and socks in the bag that I carry around on camera. <laughs> so that... So that, so that it's... it's uh, everything, everything like that is... I know where it all is. And I can deal with it at another date. <laughs> Now, when we watch you, we'll go, I know it's in that bag. Just <laughs> dirty pants. Yeah. Now, this doesn't seem right, you just sitting there. I think we should go outside. Excellent news. Put your coat on. <laughs> I love a walk by the coast. The weather's a bit changeable, though, isn't it? Probably should have put my coat on. Yeah. Geordie, though. Oh, I'm Geordie, exactly. I don't need a cold flower. Oh, nice. See, this nice. Is... Oh, it's getting to be hard work now with all this. <laughs> You're a 
historian. Um, so yeah. what's your favourite period of history? Because mine's the 80s. 70s. The 70s. They don't fly that low normally, do they? Oh, that's a kitty wig. <laughs> oh, oh. oh, oh, they liked you. Yeah. <laughs> oh. It's not normally strawberry. <laughs> from my experience. Now you're finding this a little bit too easy. This walk. Uh, can we up the pace a little bit? <laughs> How close to the coast do you actually go? I go all the way. All, oh. all the way in. Not, surely not for me. <laughs> I've never seen you in a hat before. <laughs> <laughs> you see what you did then? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> well, I should have definitely put my coat on, shouldn't I? Well, wow. That's sticking to my conditioner. <laughs> where Yvette Fielden travels the world searching for the world's most gullible audiences. <laughs> Extreme water parks. The first series was great, but now it's on the slide. <laughs> Britain's Best Drives, which I think is a show about cars, not just a programme about the bit in front of people's houses. <laughs> we didn't have time to talk about Wayne Rooney's Street Star, in which Wayne cruises the streets trawling for talent will he never learn. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> Talking tougher next tonight on BBC HD, keeping up with the headlines in Newsnight.